Today we're going to take a delayed review of the RX 6700 XT reference model from AMD and the reason I delayed this review was because I wanted to see the pricing and the stock levels unfold where AMD said they expected stock levels to be quite good with this launch but what they didn't say was that it would be quite good for the aftermarket cards which when I look at the pricing they're coming in much more expensive than the reference models and I've seen two different scenarios here in the US I saw a photo of a forum shot there where someone went to Micro Center and they could get the reference card for $480, but then the aftermarket cards were literally coming in at over 700 USD plus. I was really surprised to see it going with this much discrepancy between aftermarket cards and reference cards. And in Australia, I was told from retailers that there was only like literally a handful of stock of reference cards that came into Australia. So if you're one of the lucky few in Australia to get your hands on one of these reference cards, then that's great. But for the majority of people, you're left seeing these prices in, especially if we look at Australia, where the cards are going in excess of a thousand Aussie dollars and they're conveniently in stock versus the reference cards, which some of them were coming as low as $709. That's actually pretty good price. But with that news aside, let's go through everything with this reference card, because if they do come back in stock or if the board partners and the whole distribution chain and everyone in the process decides that they want to drop the prices of the aftermarket cards, then what are you left with in terms of realistic expectations versus say a 3060, an RTX 3060 Ti, or even the 3070? Well, we'll go through just these four cards here today and we'll start off with the 1080p numbers with F1 2020, showing that the 6700 XT does come right around that 3060 Ti and then coming a little bit behind the 3070 and of course being out in front of the 3060. Now, the important conclusion here with these three Nvidia cards is that MSRP wise, the 6700 XT, and I was told on a phone call in the previous video that it was 429, but it's actually 479 or more realistically 480 USD versus the 500 USD. So the 3070 is the closest in terms of MSRP on these cards that I'm presenting here today. But when we look at the 3060 Ti, that's coming actually a little bit closer in terms of performance levels, at least through these 1080p numbers. And we're continuing on here through Shadow of the Tomb Raider, as well as Fortnite, and as well as Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. And at 4040p, it's a similar story to 1080p, where it does come close to that 3060 Ti, and then does fall usually a little bit behind the 3070, and of course being out in front of the 3060. But I will pause mid-review because what I'm seeing, at least in Australia, is that the 3060 Ti's are sold out completely, the 3070's are sold out completely, and then the 3060's are in stock. And same with these 6700 XT's, they are in stock. So if we're looking at street pricing at the moment, the 6700 XT is pretty much coming in at the same street price now in Australia as the 3060. So that is going to make this a better buy at current prices, regardless of Nvidia having the DLSS 2.0 and the better ray tracing. But moving on to 4K does show that the 6700 XT does start to taper off a little bit, at least compared to the 3060 Ti. And if we go through F1 2020, as well as Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Fortnite and also Cold War, this does show that it indeed does start to fall behind a little bit. But we have to remember it does have a memory bus the size of 192 bit, same as the RTX 3060. So the 6700 XT and the RTX 3060 weren't really intended for 4K gaming. So I'd try and stick to 1440p or 1080p gaming. Though, let's go down to now one important thing with uh, moving forward with the next few months of pricing. And that is a cryptocurrency algorithms and hashing rates. And it's one thing that I don't really like. I don't really like GPU mining, but I think you have to cover it in the review because it's important to gauge the demand from crypto miners on this graphics card where uh, from the test here it was getting around 41 to 43 mega hashes which puts it around that level of the rtx 3060 with of course nvidia recently releasing their accidentally released driver which since then has shown the market that if you want to get an rtx 3060 then you, you're going to have a tough time now because crypto miners are buying that card up because it was essentially cheaper than the 3060 Ti's. So the mining performance of this card isn't that good when we compare it to say a 5700 XT, even the previous generation, this card gets more gaming performance and better FPS, but it gets slightly inferior hashing rates, which does make it a more desirable buy for gamers. 
So it's good to see that the hashing rates aren't that high and that at least if you're a gamer and you really want to get back into PC gaming and say wherever you are in the world, your country, you've got strict lockdowns or lockdowns are coming back into place, then at least this card is one to consider that miners aren't going to be looking for too much versus say the 3060 Ti especially. If we look at the 3060 Ti, that is literally the favorite of cryptocurrency miners. Look guys, what I'm really trying to say is I'm gonna grab my little friend Jar Jar here mid-review and we're just both gonna, together we're gonna pray for a crash. They're going through the card itself. We've got here a red, black, and silver theme with the Radeon logo lighting up red on the side. So it does look really stylish. And I gotta say, I do love the look of the Radeon reference cards. This one features two 85 mil fans and you will require a PCI 8 pin plus 6 pin. And going on to the back, you will get three display port outs and a HDMI 2.1 out, which will support 4K 120 Hertz at 10 bit. Then move on to the dimensions of this card. We got 268 mil times 111 mil times 40 and weighing in just a little under 900 grams. Now in terms of temperatures and noise, here's where the 6700 XT reference card does score i'm just going to say it straight it is a mediocre design this time around where we've got out of the box the noise levels are very good but the temperatures went quite high and in fact out of the box at 25 c ambient temperatures and i will delta adjust these to 23 c which is my favorite ambient temperature we have here 82 degrees it reached a maximum of in these ambients, so basically 80 degrees delta adjusted. This was at the auto maximum of 66%. So AMD, for some reason with the reference card, they've capped the max fan speeds in the drivers to 66%. So basically if you're not comfortable with your card getting to 80 degrees, then you'll have to go into the drivers and manually put the fan speeds with a maximum of 100%. Or in this case, I would recommend putting a maximum of 80%. When I tested these numbers here, 80% was giving out 70 degrees and the noise wasn't too loud. It was noticeable, but it wasn't anywhere near as loud as 100%. And of course, if I tested 60%, there's just no point because then the card will start thermal throttling. The last few things to go over with this card right here is you do have ray tracing support, DX12 support. I did a test here, I'll throw the numbers up for you guys. Uh, if you wanna play with ray tracing on, you will have to maybe find a happy medium between lower settings and also a lower resolution, but Nvidia's uh, ray tracing performance is coming ahead in 2021. You also get H.264 encoding as well as their feature sets, things like anti-lag and FX sharpening. Though if we go through all those in depth, then that'll drag the review out a lot longer. And I do like to keep my graphics card reviews pretty short and sweet. And in this case, we've got a card that performs somewhere in between a 3060 Ti and a 3070. However, it costs closer to that of a 3070. This is looking at the MSRP pricing. Now, in terms of getting a realistic pricing and scenario out there on the streets, this card should be in lesser of demand than the 3060 Ti and the 3070. It also carries four gigabytes more of VRAM. And if you wanna play at 1440p, especially, or even 1080p, this card is going to be good if you can get it for a good price. So if you are one of those people who got into Micro Center early and were able to get one for 480 USD, or if you got onto a website that had in stock for the first five seconds and you were able to load that into the cart, check out and purchase before a bot could, then you are sitting pretty happy. You've got some good price performance that's coming to the table. But as it stands, we've got here a realistic scenario where the cards that are in stock are coming in a lot higher in terms of pricing than the MSRP or the suggested price. I think AMD is calling it now an SEP rather than an MSRP. And if you're going for a card like this for 700 USD, it is a lot to cough up and it sort of makes that whole previous pricing scenario of graphics cards just all out the window. And if it's any feedback for AMD directly, I'd love to see them address this situation right here, the price discrepancies between the reference cards and the board partners. What is going on here? Because the statement of before release was AMD said they expected this stock to be absolutely fine. And from what I'm seeing, it is absolutely fine, the stock, but the pricing is just all messed up. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's review. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Do let us know in the comments section below what you think of the reference design, the aftermarket design here from Gigabyte, and also what you think about the whole pricing situation. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. 
And also another thing is board partners as well as AMD themselves, I'm sure they read these comments. So you guys, your voices do matter. So make them heard in the comment section below. And with that aside, we do have a chance to win a gaming OC as well. So I'll put the link in the description below if you've stayed this far and you're a tech yes citizen, get in with a chance to win one of these cards where Gigabyte will be sending it worldwide directly to your doorstep. So good luck getting in with a chance for that. And with that aside, we've got the question of the day here, which comes from Igor and they ask, does this motherboard support overclocking? And they're talking about our $53 Jingsha X58 AliExpress motherboard. I'll put the link to that video up here. And for what it's worth, I just wouldn't, I mean, it might support overclocking with a custom BIOS that I know a lot of the Russian guys, they mod the BIOSes and they get these things working with overclocks. But would you want to overclock a $53 motherboard? That is the question. And me personally, I don't even go there. I don't even go there on these Jingsha motherboards, especially if they're the budget ones. I have heard you might get more success with say a six core 12 thread on say a $100 X99 one and board, one and Z board. But in terms of this budget Jingsha board, even if it did overclock, just don't even bother. You'll have a fried motherboard on your hands pretty soon. But in terms of the motherboard itself working out of the box, it worked okay. Hope that answers that question. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that TechS content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.